a few people have joined us already. That's good. Okay, recording has started. All right, thank you. Welcome everyone. This is the weekly TSE call. It's open to everyone. Welcome to participate and contribute. There are two conditions to fulfill though. First one is to live by the antitrust policy. The notice of which is currently displayed on your screen if you look logging in through Zoom uh, app. Um, the other piece is the code of conduct, which basically requires you to behave like a decent human being. I always kind of laugh saying this because to me, that's what it comes down to. Of course, it's kind of a shortcut, but uh, an experience shows these things are necessary. So with this being done, we have a couple of announcements to get uh, started. And we do have pretty full agenda as a matter of fact. So let's keep cranking. Okay. I'll make it, I'll make uh, the first announcement really short. Uh, That's okay. Just take your time, do it. Click the My Profile link and uh, make sure that you can log in and see your stuff and your LFID. And this is the future of where you'll manage your LFID. Um, so more features are coming there soon. And uh, just please give it a whirl. And if you run into anything, uh, let me know. Thank you. But so I have a question, right? I mean, in terms of functionality, what does that really do? Is that just a new UI and makes it easier to update your profile or does that have any impact on any of the systems we use? Someday it will. Ah. Uh, so for instance, you can see that I have uh, GitHub, LinkedIn and uh, Gmail accounts connected. Uh, you can set your forwarding address if you have a linux.com email. Um, stuff like that. So you can also see your previous attendance and events that may or may not matter. But yes, in the future, this will be a more fully fleshed out UI where you'll be able to do stuff like edit your information. So. Okay, so that's important to kind of motivate people to update their profile, because that might help with some of the issues we have been having with uh, maybe the DCO eventually, but also the election process, right? That's why I put it first, exactly. Anyway. Yeah, but you need to explain it to people. Don't assume it's obvious. Thank you, Ryan. Any questions or comments on this? Is okay, this hearing similar, none. Is, yeah. is this similar to the members thing that Mara sent out, or is that just for member summit? That's distinct. Thank you. All right, and then there is a TSC election announcement. Who's going to talk to this? That is mine. Okay. Um, so if you go to the TSC election page, it's linked, well actually here, yeah. So we'll do the TSC election announcement. So um, the collection of who is eligible to vote will begin this coming Sunday. And I'm gonna be running the script that gathers eligible voters on a daily basis so that if people um, go to the, uh, the, the page to test to see if they're eligible or not and it shows up they're not eligible. Um, if you have any questions, email the election at list.hyperledger.org email. Um, otherwise, if it's because you haven't made any contributions and you want to, then you have until August 30th to get something in. There's plenty of bugs, plenty of documentation that needs to be written, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the last item here is that the election at list.hyperledger.org is um, meant for dealing with issues with eligibility or any questions or access or anything like that. And I'm looking for anybody who cares about our election process and wants to help out. Um, I'm looking for volunteers. So go ahead and email the elections mailing list saying you'd like to volunteer and I can add you. That mailing list is going to be kept private amongst the volunteers because we want to be able to deal with people's personal information you know, here's my email address, whatever, can you add me, that kind of stuff. So um, I'm just telling everybody up front that it's not going to be open to everybody um, to see the messages sent, but anybody can volunteer for the list 
to, to help out. So that's the end of the announcement. And then we'll, we have an item for discussion on the election plan later. Yep. All right, thanks, Dave. Okay, a quick, so. Question on the, um, the actual list. Um, so you're not doing sort of email matching and could you maybe explain a little bit about what you're doing for that? Like I have one's eligible and one isn't. <laughs> so. Yeah. So um, we're <clears throat> running through. So we have the scripts that we've used in the past, which mm -hmm. goes through all of our repos to gather all the email addresses. There are a few cases where we find multiple email addresses. Um, mm -hmm. And I plan to be emailing out there's only like 50 or so of those where there's multiple email addresses we get for somebody. Um, my plan is to email out like today or tomorrow to each of those three and ask people or each of those, you know, multiple email addresses, ask them which one they want to use. And I will then mail merge them. Like basically I'll update our database so that um, the one you choose is the one that you will use. And that will be what you get all the elections communications on. That's what will be in the check tool, and that's what you'll be use that you'll use when you. Um, well, I don't remember exactly the contorsion login, but I think you use an email. Um, so yeah, that'll become your identity for voting. And Chris, for for you specifically, most likely in the past, I combined your multiple email addresses into one, um, specifically your Gmail one. Um, and so that's why your other one or other ones are not showing okay. up. Okay. Yeah, so I haven't I fixed the I, check I, tool yet. So like if you punch any of those in, it's not going to come up because the, the string value in the check tool has like pipes in it, lots of email addresses for you, Chris. So I'm going to be fixing that today. That's a time. Okay. I, well, no, one of them came up fine. Yeah, the other Chris, one didn't. Chris is, Chris is fine. Um, oh, okay. Folks who have multiple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just um, I just have to pay attention to my email, which is flooded with spam. Well, <laughs> we're going to talk about the plan later. I will. I okay. plan to be sending out uh, email communication to everybody who is eligible to all of their eligible emails. So, yeah. whichever one you receive an email about the election on, that's the one to use. Okay, Chris, if you yeah, prefer thanks. a different one, uh, let me know. I can make the update. Oh, okay, thank you. Or you can email elections at list oh, <laughs> and right. get it in our queue. And All right. With that being said, as Dave said, I mean, there is an there is an agenda item specific to discussing the plan, reviewing it, and agreeing to it. So let's move on to the quarterly reports for now. Um, we got three of them, uh, actually. Yeah. So Indy Transact and uh, the working group, uh, technical working group, China also send a report. And they actually had some interesting item to bring up. So um, I thought we could also discuss that later in the agenda. Um, is there anything other than that, that anybody wants to bring up that I didn't put on the agenda because so um, I don't remember there's, as far as I remember, there's nothing about Indy that was sticking out. I noticed that not everybody has reviewed the reports yet, but I assume this will be done shortly. <laughs> um, regarding Transact, Gary brought up the point that um, maybe, you know, they should be folded within SOTOOTH if there is no other project using it. And so I actually, you know, at uh, Dano had a reaction to this and uh, I thought, okay, instead of discussing it now, I'd rather bring that up as an agenda item. So it's part of the discussion items for later. And the China group had specifically an issue with regard to dealing with the cryptography standards, which I believe has been recurrent, but also thought, okay, maybe we can discuss this on the agenda. So I don't know if there's anybody who wants to ask anything specific to this or wants to discuss any of these reports. This is the do, time to speak up. Do you want to create an issue that talk about this one? Or because, I mean, we've talked about this 
yes. actually at length, right? Back when we were looking at, you know, like sub projects and that, you know, sort of concept um, to, you know, to, to sort through the, what if there's a project, you know, under Hyperledger, not labs, but under Hyperledger um, that is applicable to a single other project. Now, Deno raises the case, well, what about this thing that's, you know, sort of Ethereum specific, but that's not BASU specific, that's Ethereum specific. So I don't think that's a sub project per se. Um, but I mean, we did sort of rule, right? That, um, you know, where there's really only one consumer that they should work with the maintainers of the, if you will, the parent project. Yeah, the problem is, they, I mean, they, their intent was broader than that, right? So on that basis, we created- For transact, no, I, I, I- And the question yes. is, how do we manage this? So let, let's but, not get too deep into this now. I, I, I want to just go over the quarterly reports for now, and we can go back to this. But that, that's I, why I asked, are you making an act, uh, a discussion topic about this? If that's yes, the case- Yes, in I'm the discussion uh, section of the agenda, it's, there is a point on that. Okay. But uh, back to the Technical Working Group China uh, report. Is David on? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I thought you wanted to highlight a few things you said. And so this is your chance. Yes, actually, uh, I, besides of the, the, the kind of quarter reports, I dropped a little bit of uh, several slides in, the, in our comments. Oh, could you ha let me have a chance to share my screen or you just go through the report first? Go for, oh, maybe I, I could better go through the report first. Okay. Yes. Okay, there we go. Can you not share? I don't see any. Yeah, yeah, I can. Oh, I can. It's oh, coming, can. it's coming. Yeah, it's now clear? I see it. Because I'm yeah. looking in Hong Kong, maybe some distance from your. your yeah, yeah, it's office. okay. It's on now. Okay, Hong Kong is good. Carry on. Good. <laughs> Telecoms. Um, this here. Okay, this is why I have to. Uh, Challenge to grab the important information of the what is Chinese crypto standards on or hyperledger standard or hyperledger fabrics. First, the, um, maybe I full screen is better. Yes, full screen is better. The background is that it has been a long time ago issues that you can see the number is under ten thousands. <laughs> if maybe five 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 four nine x x at this moment of time, uh, I'm not the committee board. One of the WGCD is Baohua raised up this up. Um, but twenty twenty this year it is market up. This issue is market as uh, stale. But why I raise it up again and reopen it as a to-do status? Because as you can see here, the financial digital agent ledger technology security specification. This is the code of this kind of specification. It is newly raised by China's uh, People Bank, which is why I say this American Federated Maybe Jay Gore can catch it for maybe answers is that in is so. So no, no matter how it is a central bank, something like a similar to do. Uh, it is not a business bank, it is a governance banks. Distributed kind of security specification is primarily on the Chinese. It is still released and applied on these states. And this is quite kind of shocking because before these times that we just simply discuss whether it's good to have one, but after that, purely standards comes out, we have to have a reference we can have to follow. Although it is T for the recommends. So it is also, it is still a recommend standard, but it will be applied to JR means in, Ch in Chinese words means finance. So this is a recommend standard for all the adoption of, of, uh, of 
uh, DLT technology in finance. Uh, the voice coming from the central bank. So there will be uh, rumors and gossip up once after that. <laughs> so some of the competitors of hyperledgers, something like BCOS, super chains, and all the other consumerity will blame whether okay, February is not native support of in that specification. Uh, we have already done a, a review. Maybe I can see it later. Yes, we have already done a complex analysis review for the this kind of, of towards fabrics on and the specification. This is still working in progress, uh, and this percentage is under, under, under progress. And another, then the, the last point we we have said in the background is even before the specification comes out, there's already a lot of trials to migrate fabrics to uh, make it as uh, compatible to a GM crypto set, crypto library. Uh, we, have, we have gathered a statistic to at least five fork, we have, which are some, um, some of them are well maintained and some of them are not, but at least five, I don't know, sevens, above sevens uh, are collected in our statistics. And people, <laughs> and once after the specification is released, people is, I, we are our, our fabric communities in our mainland China is uh, have have been frequently asked that what, where is the China's crypto fork of fabric, which is standard one, which is the recommended one, which I have a paper to fast uh, have an iteration of based on. So after that, we are more frequently being asked. So this is our response. The first trial is that we have a. Uh, uh, actually, a uh, quite a large, large table. You can you can you can visit the link here. This is uh, something I can have first. Maybe you could have uh, whether whether I could. No, we don't have time to get into the details. So of okay, yes, yeah, sure. It's quite large. This is our analysis towards and the, the next. So because we are, have already found a lot of conflicts in that doc on the on the analysis. So we reorganize a uh, cooperation path. We name this other fabric. The, the original name is Fabrics Open Governance <laughs> GMs. So this is a wiki, and we already collect uh, the int potential collaborator of about 515 and uh, 5 maintainers. We raise as an initial maintainers. OK. And what we structure in current status is we, we, we will already write three streams as a crypto, crypto library. So you may wonder why this will be a three streams instead of just once one library satisfies all the standards. It seems it, the same thing as something like uh, you may have open SSL and also boring SSL. So that's simply their, their, their implementation in different way and from an issue from the different parties. So some of the, oh, oh, what happened? What happened? Okay, maybe my, my mouse has some problems. Sorry. And three is an institution, the Peking University is an institution. This is a company, this is a company. And the, the bracket ones is, is the most commonly used because it is also alongside provide a fabric fork. But this, this kind of fork, uh, although it's a are quite frequently used. The last company time is still at two years ago, more than. So uh, we also have a fork of fabrics uh, under the TWGC org. Yes, we we also we only maintain a release port at the latest LTS and master branch, and potentially we may have another GM plugin maybe. So it is, it is placed to to store the implementation of BCCSP GM. Uh, GM style of GRCPC and new X3, X5, 509 interface for all the, all the three streams. So when the, it is done, the fabrics also exposed to only had an interactive with this plugin instead of the other three zone one. So this is the one, maybe we will have a pre-built Golang uh, conditional builds when they are, when, when go in, inside the Golang. So 
the following is our current the drafted designs. Uh, first, on the fabric itself part, we, we are proposing whether we could have uh, the chain. The first point is that we, we're trying to migrate from the hard coded crypto part, at least includes a SHA uh, 256 to hash to hash interface and crypto x500, uh, which is which we uh, log into the, the Go native package source code. So we found it, it is all done by the switch. It could be whether it is ECDSA or 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 ISA or identity because they are all structured in the, the switch and cases. So it could be hard to plug in into another crypto library beside of beside of his already defined ones. So we will also collect some one of the we also have uh, some statistic to collect all the functions related to X500 and I used in fabrics and making to get all the methods together and functions together to make it as an interface. It's here, we will maybe, uh, it, this part of interface may be put into the fabric or the, the GM plugin. And another more uh, harder part is the crypto config outside the DCCSP. We have already found at least two parts. Two parts. The first is the crypto config session in each MSP definition, and the hashing algos value in the global or, or I say is the global scope of the channel. Okay. And uh, we also definitely uh, we also have the, the three streams of the crypto libraries. That's the three times here. So we also make some works on pay, we apply on here. It will be some of the CI alignments or fabric spills, a Go version alignment, OS image, Azure pipeline, behavior test to have a better. Yes, the third part is the GM plugin. But before that we go, uh, actually it's not the before we go, we, we along with that, while we're going on the part, this part, we have some wondering questions, uh, I'm still stuck in on, or maybe the blocking on the video, is that uh, some of the design concepts, uh, which are not fully implements or documents in Fabric itself. For example, uh, for example, so if there's some parking, okay. Maybe no, but I think this is good. I mean, I think people understand what this is about. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, some of these questions are too low levels, fabric specific. You're not going to get much answers on this call, though, of course, we have people like Gary who probably can answer some of them. But mm -hmm. I'm more interested in, you know, stepping mm -hmm. back a little bit. And I would like to know, I mean, is that a fabric specific problem? How does URSA deal with this? Uh, is URSA a solution or what? Any reactions from anybody? Actually, what I see, because we also have discussed the what, what, how should we consider or place us as a role, because in Hyperledger, there's also one effort making to us as, as a basic uh, crypto library, is it? So yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, so we also have some internal discussion. So you may see, actually, this three stream as the GM crypto library. They are, what, what I see them is a parallel or equivalent to us. It itself is self-contained and work quite well. So uh, I, I'm not sure whether this stream can all pr uh, put in into the uh, as a source, um, but uh, actually it work as the same. Okay. They provide the BCCSP input. Uh, they can provide all the spectrum of the both the asymmetric or asymmetric encrypts and also the alternative of TRS ways. And also uh, the definition, some, 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 kind, some of one are also it includes the definition of the certificates uh, interface. But all the, the uh, under our, our, maybe Jay Goy, you can. Have yeah, just Arnold, that. this is Jay. Uh, I just like to provide a little bit of background. So basically yes. all these software, all these software, not only blockchain, all these software are sold in China. Uh, if it's dealing with some core uh, functionality or we, uh, relate to national security like core banking or some uh, financial institu institution then it need to conform with China regulations like this one uh, it, it needs to establish the uh, for example security connection using the uh, uh, China cryptographic regulation so it's not really only about blockchain and it's certainly not only about hyperledger fabric 
and uh, but it's not applied to all the software. For example, if it's dealing with commercial um, application or just some not like core functionality that's related to national security, then that's fine. We can just use like RSA or whatever uh, crypto algorithm that's internationally uh, popular. But since blockchain sometimes or a lot of times we're dealing with banking, this is why this is probably particularly important for us to support the China cryptographic uh, algorithms. If that makes sense. That's interesting because it depends on the field of application. Exactly, exactly. And uh, as David mentioned before, the, uh, the newly published regulation uh, we are currently reviewing it within China Working Group. Uh, this is recommended uh, specification, but the, um, it's kind of got attention among all the banks and financial institutions here. And uh, we're not very certain whether this will become the de facto uh, standards within the industry, but we just want to be precautious and to see how much uh, we are like, like how much conflict we currently have against this specification and what actions we could take. And uh, for one, there's um, in incorporating uh, China uh, cryptographic algorithms could be one of the action. Actually, this is the biggest, uh, I'd say biggest barrier uh, in terms of uh, complying with this spec. And some others like uh, we need to have account system or whatever that could be all solved in, in my opinion, at the application level. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Any comments or reactions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Arno, this is Dave Hughesby. Um, sorry, I dropped off there for the last minute. So stop me if I'm being redundant. Um, originally, Ursa was going to be the way we got abstractions for um, allowing national crypto standards into the Hyperledger projects, but Fabric maintainers decided not to go with Ursa um, some time ago. So that's fine. Um, if we want to support anything like this in Fabric, obviously it needs to be modular. My only ask is that um, compiling Fabric with any specific national crypto standard, whether it's Chinese or NIST or Russian crypto standard, that it takes extra work so that there's, you cannot compile fabric by default with those standards enabled, right? That's my only ask, um, just from a security maven standpoint. Um, other than that, I think it's just gonna require a lot of communication and coordination between the fabric maintainers and, and uh, the developers who want to um, add these national crypto standards to fabric. I, I, I personally have no problem with it. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is Angelo. So I'm, I'm the designer of the BCCSP module in, uh, in Fabric. So I'm, I have a comment. I guess, especially for the banking system, for the, to the best of my knowledge, most of the time you are using HSMs. So Fabric can already interface HSMs and then it doesn't matter which are, which are the algorithms that the HSMs are, um, are actually running. Is this um, fine or do, do, do we have also um, specifications for the HSM or do, do you use a different API for the HSMs? Yes, it, they did have. Because most of the interface for the HSM is mostly we are, are we using is PKCS 11s. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's definitely. But most of the, the security hardware in mainland China is not designed at this way. They have the two standards, namely, namely they are SKF and SDF. So <laughs> rarely of the HM uh, hardware have, have any idea of the, what is this kind of interface. So, so just, just, just to make yeah. sure that I understood, the, um, there's no HSM hard, there's no um, Chinese HSM hardware that speaks PKC S11. Um, also, again, it's the Chinese regulation. It's fine, not another interface named SKF for the PCIe card. And other ah, software. you are forbidden to use PKCS 11. Okay, got it. Okay. Yes. Excuse it, me, gentlemen. So, um, uh, oh, well, maybe you go first. 
yeah i think we have uh, our call now uh, so it's falling over uh, are you close to finish i'm sorry <laughs> i think there's a miss we would, we would we would we would we would still have a problem PK, we, our, our, our calls are in there but anyway i think look the way to proceed i mean get, the cryptographic algorithms or whatever right we can deal with i think the two bigger problems with this are right um working on the grpc side because essentially grpc fundamentally limits you to tls 12 and tls 13 uh approved algorithms of which there are no versions of those that actually include you know sm4 i haven't looked at the latest spec of the of the, of the china stuff so i'm not sure which which uh what, what algorithms they're actually talking about in there but but basically those aren't going to be approved cryptographic ciphers under tls 12 or 13 so you have to override that right and that becomes a pain in the butt because then somebody has to go basically say they're going to always maintain this fork of it or we have to decide how we want to do that i would probably just not create a custom bccsp and because i think we're avoiding too much stuff we can add additional algorithms to the existing software one uh, the hardware one on PKCS11, even if they did support PKCS11, uh, we still actually call specific operations on the HSM that are literally calling out ECDSA. So you'd have to change that. Uh, we could also discuss another interface if sorry, we want sorry, to sorry, look at so, how we sorry, call guys. HSM. Sorry, guys. This is the, I think you ran out in the end. Now it's a the different call. So we need to start. Okay. So, Rai, do you know what this is it's about? The just half an hour. This yes. seems to be a mess up right on the Dave. Zoom. Are you guys uh, needs to wait. Yeah, we have been uh, we have been using this backup slot uh, for the last six months, and uh, yeah, we have We've been, been using it for five years. TSC call, you got the wrong link. Yeah. Hey, oh, that's really strange. Oh, really? We've been always using this call, and uh, there was never a clash. Harsha, when we moved from Tuesday to Thursday, did you clarify that this? Uh, because the uh, hyperledger has, I think, only two links, and they share them between the different calls. So you oh, need that to clarify. Oh, 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 yeah. I need you guys yeah. to. I need you guys to sort this out elsewhere. Okay. okay. So this sorry, for, This for thirty minutes more. Uh, so yeah, this call goes for another thirty minutes. Thanks, guys. You have twenty-five, twenty-six. Yeah, so, talk to me or Ryan. We can help you guys find a, a slot and a time and a okay. call. Yeah, sure. Okay. I, I'll talk to you. Sorry for the problem. Yeah. Bye. No, it's okay. All right. So I, I would like to actually close on this now because, I, you know, a lot of this seems to be very fabric specific. I think I saw on the comment that uh, on the page that Brian suggested an RFC. I would agree with this. If it's just to solve fabrics problem, then I, I think you're better off having the kind of discussion, you know, to, to address the points that Gary was on which you know, clearly highlights that it's not an easy thing to tackle. There are many different ways you could go at it. And this would be best discussed with the fabric maintainers. So you can have a RFC, you can have a, put an agenda on the maintainers uh, or contributors call, uh, one of those, you know, so that you can follow up on the discussion with the maintainers. I was interested in the discussion at a bit of higher level. I'm not sure I got that much, but, you know, is URSA solving this problem already, uh, you know, and how other projects, you know, how do other projects deal with it? But So I think uh, URSA solves this problem in theory, but there's a lot of issues calling Rust code from Go, uh, which is sort of the biggest, w yeah. which is one of the biggest limiting factors at this point with using uh, or so with Fabric, obviously Ursa is mostly written in Rust. Yeah, um, yeah but, 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 but again, I think people need to, I mean, we, I, look, I'll, I'll just say that I think Arno, you're right, we should do it in here. I mean, the bigger point in here is right, there can be items, people could have had forks, nobody's ever really submitted any code for our review. Uh, you know, no one's ever come back and actually like asked, you know, I mean, they've asked questions, right? Uh, on the Ursa thing, right, but cryptographic algorithms uh, and then uh, actually how cryptographic algorithms are exploited are two different things. Uh, so, you know, the, like if, and we, if we want to tackle things piecemeal, we can, happy to help. Uh, it's interesting, I think on this spec, I'd be interested in seeing that things can really change. I've heard the same thing about Russian ghost algorithms for years, and I have shipped commercial products in that country 
for banking that have never actually implemented Ghost. I actually went to Russia and said I'd implement Ghost if you gave me an HSM that did it. And they were like, okay, and they never did. So, you know, I don't have a problem doing it. I think the bigger breakdown is, you know, finding a better way to, you know, collaborate. I think there's also people who want it. So it's good that they want to bring these algorithms there. That's fine by me. We can figure out, you know, how to do it and have a discussion of it. And then, you know, as with everything, anything that goes into the tree really comes down to who's going to maintain, maintain stuff going forward. That, that was kind of the notion of the, of the plugin stuff. Unfortunately, that failed because it's not supported well by Go. We have other options, but, you know, the main thing where we're critical on stuff is people can't just abandon code, right? You can't have Fabric be a dumping ground for, like, you know, one experiment or whatever and then have it go because then people like, you know, myself, Angela or whatever, when people try to use it, get stuck trying to fix it. And we only have so much bandwidth. All right. So with this being said, I, I'm going to move on. Thank you. Thank you, David, for bringing this up. Hopefully you get some sense of what you need to do next. Otherwise, feel free to ping me and I can give you further direction. But I think with Jay, for instance, he can also help out bridge the gap if there is any. So with that being said, let's move on with the agenda. I, I, I had a point for now um, regarding the reports. Both Transac and Indy mentioned that they were down fairly low with contributors compared to where they were. And I'm wondering if this is a seasonal trend or if it's something that the TSC needs to start looking at across all the projects to see if contributor numbers are down. Transac said they were like at three. And so it would seem that they've, you know, sort of fallen below a level at which we would grant them project status if they were looking to form a new project. Um, Indies down because of Aries and, and things like that. So, yeah, it sounded like in this case, it was more specific to their community where people are focusing on other things right now. And with the split in different projects, it kind of split the resources across the projects. So, there are fewer on each project. And tell me if I'm wrong, but that was my reading. <clears throat> it's interesting in the um, insights page you there is a sort of like a top level summarization of all of hyperledger um unfortunately you can't drill down to understand time periods and stuff uh you can but perhaps we can save that for another call oh i was just yeah okay if you can that would be nice all right, but so point taken, Mark, uh, we can have another look at that. Right, let's move on to the election because we have to make a decision today so that we can stay on par with the, the plan. So as we discussed earlier, the TSC election is to get started, at least the process, right? Which, you know, is civil, there are civil steps into this process. So I put this as a decision, according to a decision we made last year, we have to have a plan presented by the staff and needs to be approved by the TSC at least a month before the actual election. So we need to do that now to stay in, uh, in sync. And so can you click on that link, uh, Rai? Please, TSC election. So that's the plan that uh, David was talking about earlier. So Dave, you want to say more about this? Um. Yeah, I mean, this is, we've gone back and forth since I first presented this a few weeks ago. Um, you can see all the questions and um, updates at the bottom. Um, the, the most notable change recently is that I've just added a section called communications about when emails will be sent to eligible voters. Um, the timeline is pretty well set above that. And um, I plan on sending emails out to all eligible voters when nominations are open, when the nominations are about to close, when voting is open, and then when we have results. So um, that's really all we need to discuss today because I think the rest of it has been sort of tacitly approved through communications unless there are any other questions. So, yeah, so that's what I'm hoping for that this becomes just an administrative step. You know, as I said, we have a decision we made 
to approve this. So it's been presented. Some of us have commented, have invited everybody to look at this page and comment as necessary. Um, there were some questions raised and answered. So is there anything else or can we move to approve this now? And so I guess the, I the last thing is the elections at, at list.hyperledger.org, right? That was also set up just recently to handle all of the communications, but yeah, I explained yeah. that earlier. Tracy, sorry. Yeah, no worries, Dave. Uh, so a question is, is the deadline for submissions of nominations, is that uh, September 30th, 31st, whatever the end of September is? Uh, or, because it doesn't have like a timeline for when the nominations have to be submitted. That's a very good catch. Uh, yeah, I intended that the formal announcement of the slate of candidates would close the nominations, but I should probably call that out here on the list. Good catch. I'll add it. Can you just fix that now? Yeah, for sure. Yep, I'm doing it right now. So we're going to have a, a month of uh, of the, we're going to have a month of that? I, I'll end it like a couple days before, so whatever yeah or like yeah the 30th of, of september yeah a month of that because this year um if if there are third party nominations we need to confirm with the person who's being nominated um i ask if you want to nominate somebody else that you first ask them that's polite um but yeah I, I, we're not going to allow third party nominations without confirmation so i'm giving us plenty of time to deal with that um you know, to, to ask if they actually do want to be nominated. Okay, good catch, Tracy. Anything else? Anyone else can spot? The period where the voting is open falls within one calendar week. Is there a way to spread that across two calendar weeks? So if someone's on vacation that week, they may not see it in their work email and miss the chance to vote of course if they're on vacation for two weeks it wouldn't matter if it was spread over but <laughs> yeah but if you go by that um, is, is that a sorry i was gonna say is that a real concern uh was something that was raised last year but then again people well, a lot of people aren't on vacation in october where they are in august so that's right i mean we did move it to october to deal with this issue um we also are presenting the timeline now, and I'm going to be talking about it in every TSC call from now until we have a slate of, or until we have results and the new uh, TSC, assuming um, their role. So, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe from between 30th of August and the 1st of October, that's a bit long just to call for nominations on the other hand. So maybe we can split a bit of that time take one week off of that and put it in the voting period. Yep, we can totally do that. Um, that would mean that we could end nominations on the 26th of September and then voting from 27 of September to 10 October. That would give us two full, let's see here. Yeah, two full weeks, 14 calendar days. Yeah, I mean, to is that me, what we all want to do. It doesn't. I have think to, it's a good trade-off. All right, I was going to say it doesn't have to be a two, two full weeks. It would just span two calendar. Right. But whatever. Yeah, I'll just do that. Um, my internet's kind of going up and down right now, so I'll make the edits as soon as I get on stable internet. Thank you. All right, noted. Anything else? Um, yes, I just, I, the FA I want to go back to Rye's question, um, given your new timeline of the 26th. Um, I, I think if I understood Rye correctly, the, the comment was making sure that there was enough time between closing of getting the emails, processing those emails so that you could actually start the vote. Um, so you may want to consider uh, like the deadline for nominations to be the 19th and then the vote to be the 26th through the 10th 
or whatever those dates were that you gave. Um, just just to make sure that you have enough time to do what I think Rye was suggesting is the the processing of those nominations and making sure you got the right list. Yeah, that seems wise. I I like that. So that still gives us three day three weeks. No, it gives us two full weeks of nominations, one week of getting our stuff together, and then two full calendar weeks of voting. Yeah. I think that's a wise timeline. Yeah. Thanks for that feedback, Ray and Tracy. Anything else? Can somebody edit the page so that we get the, because I would like us to vote on this now. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying, let me try to do that. My internet. What right do you now, want? What, what do you want me to type in where? Um, so on the timeline, yep, on the timeline, third item down, or actually second item down, go from 30th August to 19th September, and and that should be just like, you know, publish the email template for submitting nominations and open for call, call or just add an item below it saying 19 September or nominations close. And then uh, we'll formally announce the slate of candidates on the 26th. And then change the date for open the TSC election voting via Condorcet. That'll be 26 September to 10 October. That's all we need. Yeah, but right, you need to no. change back the, th the first 19th of September. That was August. <clears throat> Should be the 30th of August. Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, there's no time in between. That doesn't work. So the 31st? Yeah. It was the 30th, but yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Um, yeah, but they and do I think it's important to it also works. be a little bit more specific on when things close. Is it end of business? Whose business? What time zone? Midnight, you know, GMT. I think you need to be specific. I delegate to the TSC. I, I will. I, I will update this page as as is, and I ask someone to edit this to their to the way they want it. I think we should do Midnight Pacific. Dude, the world revolves around the East Coast, man. Oh, yeah, Coast. dude. Jeez. <laughs> no, this is actually to deal with the fact that there are people who are not done with the day, and I think it makes sense too. I I, yeah, I think Pacific is probably right, unless you want to do Guam. Well, considering Dave is the one that's going to be doing all the work and there is no need for him to stay up until midnight Pacific to do a thing. Um, I wouldn't mind if, it, if this was centered around business day Pacific, but that's kind of up to Dave to say. Yeah. I mean, I don't really care. I have meetings with people in Russia at 3 AM. It's not a big deal. Um, if we were to oh, do GMT to do at the end anything. of the day. And it's not exactly, you don't have to do anything. It's just that when it closes and you don't accept mm. votes and stuff like this. So it's like, okay. You can Dave, find did it. you mix Russians and election in the same conversation? What? <laughs> I was wondering if anybody caught that. Uh, <laughs> um, All right. If it was around GMT, that's totally fine too, because you know midnight GMT is sometime in the middle of my day, so whatever, it doesn't matter. Really, truly, doesn't matter to me. Just I, I'll do whatever you guys want me to do. Midnight Pacific, done. So I attempted to update that September 19th under J Pacific. Um, was there another place we needed to add that, Chris? Or um, did I catch what you wanted? Uh, I think it would be the 10th of October. So the, the close of the, the TSC election. Ah, good point. That is something where you have to actually log in and click a button to, to end the election. So. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm happy with end of day Pacific.
Yep, yeah, me too. It's fine. I don't care. All right. Are we done? Uh, Ry, could you refresh? I think I just updated that. Thank you, Tracy, for helping out. Ah, uh, there we go. Got some interwebs. Okay, so right. now we're formatting, so that's good. Let's uh, let's get moving already now. I'm uh, suggesting we approve this plan. Second. Yeah, thank you. Um, do we need to have a roll call there? Or? Let's just do a roll call, man. Let's do one. We haven't done one in a while. I approve. <laughs> well, uh, Angelo? I approve. Ardo? Yes. Chris? You. Uh, Gary? Yes. Art? Yes. Mark? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Swetha? Yes. Tracy? Yes. And I don't think Troy is here either. So there you go. All the, right. The yeses, yos, and whatevers have it. <laughs> okay. So thank you for doing this. It's amazing how this election stuff always takes a lot of time. So back to the agenda. In the few minutes left, I don't think we can really do uh, much, but maybe we can still start a little bit this discussion or, or continue it because we started a little bit earlier. And so it was brought up again in the context of the Transact report where Gary pointed out like, well, Transact was supposed to be working with different projects, but it doesn't. So does it make sense to fold it back into Sawtooth where it's the only project that really uses it? So it brings the general question about, you know, how do we deal with this? We already, as Chris pointed out, you know, we already decided that when we have new project proposals and when they come in, we look at them and they say, we say, oh, this is like, you know, an add-on to this existing project. It should really go into that project rather than exist as a separate project. The problem here is a bit different is that a project comes in with a broader agenda to, you know, uh, work with multiple frameworks. And then in the end, you know, some months later, whenever, you know, some period of time, uh, it just doesn't happen. And the question is, well, if, you know, should, what do, should we do in that situation? Should we say, hey, you know, if it had come as a proposal, this is just an extension to Sawtooth in this case, for instance, Transact, you know, we would have said, yeah, go do that as part of Transact, as part of Sawtooth, that's great. And so, should we revise those projects and say, well, you know, after a certain period of time, if things don't pan out the way the original contributor or proposers came, you know, uh, had anticipated, maybe it's time to, as just a policy of like management of the projects, right, to do a bit of cleaning up and say, maybe we need to fold this into this other project. So that's kind of, you know, and I, Ideally, we would have a policy to deal with this like we have for many other things. And my, my point on this is, well, maybe it's not possible to have a general policy, although maybe there is. We could set the deadline and say, after so much you know, time, if, it does, if it's only related to one project, it doesn't ma matter whether the intent was broader than that or not, we fold it. If we can't have a general policy, um, do, how do we deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis? So that's kind of the premise. And we probably won't have time to get over this today, but we can start it. And I'm happy to discuss this further on the next call. Yeah, and, and, and I guess, you know, I guess, you know, when I, when I wrote, just as a quick thing, just so, and again, it wasn't any malfeasance or anything on like malintent or anything like that. <clears throat> and it just so happened that I happened to be working with, uh, I, I, when I when I read that thing, I was looking at etcd raft uh, just because we use etcd raft, and I was like, well, you know, etcd raft, you know, is there's etcd the product we all know they built a raft implementation. Turns out etcd raft is a Go library that people use. Hyperledger Fabric uses it, Docker uses it, uh, Kubernetes, like other pro uh, CockroachDB uses it. 
So it turns out that it's a component initially developed for etcd, but shared into other projects. So that kind of got me thinking, well, I'm like, well, <laughs> there's kind of a parent for this one, you know, Sawtooth. And even though the fact that it might want to be used somewhere else, it's really kind of just a library or a component with a key tie. Would it make sense to be in that structure rather than to put it under, rather than to put this under, you know, a, a top level kind of project, you know, review structure. So that, that's kind of just where my, my head was at, just in case. Or I know some that I'm nice, not nicely, but that's kind of just where, what I was looking at when I was thinking that, so. All right, thanks for that. And, and Dan, I'd like to point out to you because you responded to Gary's uh, uh, message on the or comment. And I have to admit, I'm not sure exactly what you were saying. So if you could further explain, at least for my benefit, I would appreciate. So there are multiple clients that implement Ethereum, um, not just Beisu. There's um, Geth, uh, Nethermind, Open Ethereum. And there's some projects out there that work with all four of the clients, including Beisu. Um, one in, um, in labs, the, um, the, uh, the, the message mesh that's, um, what, what, I forgot the name of it, but it's the one that Yaz is running. If that were to come into as a main project with the uh, preference of the TSC be that it be a standalone project, um, even though the only DLT under Hyperledger it works with is Beisu, or should be part of Beisu, even though it works with more than just Beisu. So okay. stuff but like that coming down the pike. It might be used by somebody else outside of Hyperledger. Right. That's your point. Uh, I thought that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, so in this case, for instance, go back to the Transact example. If it turns out that some of the projects can be pointed to and say, hey, but they use Transact. They don't use Sotooth. So that justifies keeping Transact as a separate project. That's what you're saying, right? I mean, that's a totally reasonable point. I think if there is a case like this, I mean, a policy, whether we have a general policy or on a case-by-case -case basis, you know, this could be taken into account for sure. So, or at least a recommendation which direction to start. So a question would be if we move, just for sake of example, we move Transact back under Sawtooth and Sawtooth decides they don't care about Transact anymore, can they you know, can they kill it off as it's just under them or, you know, how, how does that happen? Um, you know, if something becomes a sub project of another project, can it just get killed off? You know, there's a, a lot of longer term questions that we have much less than a minute to resolve. One thing I might just propose is that the TSC responds back to Transact and suggests, you know, is there a time where, you know, there's a next dotto release of Transact being, you know, the starting place places are being planned where there could be some outreach to the other frameworks to see, you know, is this a, a useful time to revisit the original uh, goal of Transact, right? Um, uh, you just, just as like a, a way of focusing back and asking and engaging the Transact maintainers on how might we get back to some of that original vision. All right, so we're out of time, unfortunately, but I, I'm happy to continue this discussion. I do think there's something important here for us to do, and it really falls into, you know, the scope of the things that TSC needs to worry about is the management of the overall projects, right? And so I think if we can come up with some rules, that would be good. And um, so not necessarily just, you know, pertaining to transact, although that could be an example we can use for sure. All right, with that being said, let's keep it at this so everybody gets the time they deserve. We are moving on. So thank you all for calling today. We'll join you again next week or the following.